the last video, I gave a brief introduction of the debate on whether or not the theory of evolution, creationism, and intelligent design should be taught in public schools, as well as some statistics on what many people think of the topic. I also explained what each one of these beliefs are and went over the first reason why creationism and intelligent design shouldn't be taught in public schools, which is that it violates the Constitution. The Constitution is what keeps church and state separate, and truthfully, the only thing that keeps religion out of schools. However, the legal reasons why creationism or intelligent design shouldn't be taught in public schools aren't the strongest arguments for most people. The next reason why these beliefs don't belong in schools is a simple one. There are too many forms of creationism to teach students, such as Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Greek mythology, and more importantly, they encourage discrimination and intolerance to those who are different. Think about it. Creationism is the simple idea that God created the universe. That's it. I don't think it's possible to stretch that out over a whole semester, or even a class period for that matter. So what's the school going to teach? A more specific religious belief like Christianity or Islam? Well, which one? The religion of the majority? That doesn't sound too fair. In fact, it sounds just like what the Founding Fathers warned us about. Assuming public schools teach one specific religion, it's obviously going to encourage a lot of discrimination towards students of different belief systems. So how can that be fixed? Well, I guess we could teach every major religion in public schools and allow students to choose, right? Assuming we can find a teacher in a Texas public school system willing to teach Islam. But problem solved, right? Wrong. By doing this, schools are creating little social groups for each belief system. I don't think it's necessary to explain why dividing students based on their religion is a bad idea. You can't deny that most major religions teach their followers to be intolerant towards anyone who's different than them. The simple action of not accepting one specific god is enough to give anyone a one-way ticket to hell. It's impossible to teach any one of these religions, or even every one of these religions, without encouraging discrimination among students and even teachers. The theory of evolution, on the other hand, does not encourage discrimination. One may argue that it could, considering the fact that it completely contradicts religious scripture, but they would be wrong. The only thing that would encourage that discrimination is the religious scripture itself that encourages intolerance towards people of different beliefs. In this case, people who accept the theory of evolution as an alternative to a religion. The theory of evolution is simply science. There's no discrimination to it, and every student should have the right to learn about it in their science class. These two reasons are enough as to why it's important to keep creationism and intelligent design out of the classroom. However, there is one reason that is perhaps more important and even more obvious than the aforementioned two, which is the fact that teaching creationism and intelligent design completely contradicts the theory of evolution. Most Americans believe that creationism, intelligent design, and the theory of evolution should all be taught in public schools together so that students will have the ability to decide which of the three to believe in for themselves. Although most people who believe this most likely have the best intentions in mind, teaching students that they should choose what they accept as truth isn't a good idea. We don't get to choose what is real and what isn't, and teaching students to blindly accept something as reality without the least bit of proof is very dangerous. The unfortunate reality about most religions is that they teach their followers to deny everything that contradicts what they teach, no matter how much evidence there is supporting it. However, a growing number of people see religion as nothing more than a roadblock. A roadblock that gets in the way of science and makes people stop asking questions just because it conflicts with their own religious teachings. Many creationists have a strict set of guidelines and rules when it comes to thinking. If they stray too far from what their holy books claim, then their religion no longer makes any sense, so they simply reject anything that that suggests differently. This is the last thing that should be taught to students as an alternative to a scientific theory. Because religion means faith, and faith means believing something without evidence. And if you believe something without evidence, and you've been brought up to think that belief without evidence is somehow supremely virtuous, and you don't have to justify your belief, you just say, that's my faith, don't question it. That's a recipe for danger. Everyone has his or her own opinion on religion in today's society, but it's hard to say that teaching creationism and intelligent design doesn't act as a roadblock for scientific advancement. Most of the scientific community agrees that religious beliefs don't belong in the classroom for this very reason. Biological evolution is one of modern science's most important ideas. It's a discovery that has the potential of answering so many of our questions and is one of the most important things that should be taught to students in public schools. There is so much evidence supporting it from so many different fields of scientific investigation that we should not teach alternatives to the theory of evolution simply because it conflicts with people's personal beliefs. Scientists learn more and more from the theory of evolution every day and it's vital to continue teaching it. Science is not about what you want to be the truth. 
It's about finding out what actually is the truth. You can't handle the truth! Public school teachers should present the theory of evolution to their students and explain to them the evidence that it has. Afterwards, students can make up their own mind whether or not they choose to accept it. Most of the scientific community would agree that the largest risk of incorporating creationism and intelligent design in public schools is that these religious beliefs completely contradict science. These ideologies cannot be incorporated into a science curriculum simply because they are not science, and by teaching them, they discourage students from asking questions and breaking the barriers that most religions build. The main drawback of many religious beliefs is that they teach their followers to reject any idea, regardless of how much evidence it has, as soon as it begins to conflict with their own teaching. In conclusion, there are far too many reasons why we shouldn't teach creationism and intelligent design in public schools. It's unconstitutional because it's a violation of the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. It's also a bad idea to incorporate these ideologies ethically because they have the ability to encourage discrimination between students and even faculty. Most importantly, these beliefs contradict science and discourage students from thinking logically. A religious belief which has no scientific evidence does not have the credibility to be taught as an alternative to the theory of evolution, which has so much potential when it comes to scientific advancement. The truth is, teaching students that creationism and intelligent design are just as plausible as the theory of evolution is nothing more than a blatant lie from a scientific viewpoint. Luckily, most states acknowledge the fact that teaching creationism and intelligent design is unconstitutional and that the theory of evolution is a very beneficial curriculum for students. However, it seems as though there are never a lack of fundamentalist religious groups that demand that schools incorporate their religious ideologies or remove the scientific theory of evolution. It's very important for people to become educated on the topic so that these demands are never given into. The negative effects of teaching these religious ideologies as well as the benefits of teaching the theory of evolution are are undeniable, and by only teaching the one that has the credibility required to be considered a scientific theory, public schools will be a much better place as well as much better equipped for teaching their students.